Hello. This lecture is about the leverage J function, and it's a dimensionless scaling of capillary pressure. And the reason why it's used, I'm going to show briefly on the board here, is imagine you measure in the laboratory capillary pressure as a function of saturation shown here. Okay, here the saturation initially is one. This is a primary drainage process, for instance. This capillary pressure measured in the laboratory may be measured on a small sample of rock that's not necessarily has exactly the same porosity and permeability that may be representative or average for the field. Furthermore, the fluids may be different. They may be oil and water at ambient conditions as opposed to oil and water at reservoir conditions, or as commonly happens, the measurement of capillary pressure, certainly for primary drainage, is done using mercury. Mercury is the non-wetting phase, displacing a vacuum, which uh, actually is the wetting phase in this example. So this say, for instance, is a measurement using mercury, and these are the experimental points. But for field applications, we want to know the corresponding capillary pressure in the field as a function of saturation. Now you might say, well, if this is primary drainage and we want to understand the way in which the non-wetting phase invades the pores, they probably, even in the mercury experiment, you know, they, they invade that network of the largest throats first and then invade progressively narrow regions of the pore space. So the shapes of these curves will be the same. But how do we scale them? How do we actually get a real number out rather than sort of waving our hands and hoping for the best? And the way in which we do it is through what's called the leverage J function. So all the equations are on the board, but what I'm going to do is to use the whiteboard to go through this. So I'm going to share the screen. Here is the whiteboard. So what I'm going to do is write down an expression for capillary pressure in a single invasion of a single throat, say in primary drainage. And we know that the expression is two sigma cos theta over some pore radius. The other thing that we know, and this comes from Darcy's law and considering say flow in a bundle of tubes, is that the permeability is related to the porosity and a typical pore size squared. Now this R here, the pore radius, and this R here may be different because obviously within a real rock, there's going to be a range of pore size. But we can imagine these as representative pore sizes. And probably what I mean by a representative pore size is the radius of a throat such that there is a connected path through the rock with radii of that size or larger. So it's a representative critical threshold radius to allow the non-wetting phase to span the system. Okay, we know this. We can also, as shown before, we can measure capillary pressure, say in the lab. So this is PC and I use the L for the lab. And if it's a primary drainage capillary pressure, the capillary pressure will always be positive, but it's not exclusive to this case. So we get something like this, and that's then our entry pressure here. And imagine we have some experimental points like this. And as I said, we want to scale that capillary pressure to what it would be under field conditions with maybe different permeabilities, porosities, and fluid pairs. The key insight here is to introduce a dimensionless function. We see that capillary pressure is a function of saturation. We see that locally the capillary pressure is proportional to sigma cos theta. So we might say, well, we can write PC as a sigma cos theta divided by some typical radius. Well, what's a typical radius in terms of permeability? Because again, we don't necessarily know a radius. We don't necessarily do X-ray imaging. And then what radius are we looking at? But we do traditionally measure permeability. So we can write here that a typical radius scales as k over phi, and there's a square root. 
So here's one over radius. So we can write phi porosity over K. And that's then the dimensionless form. This object here has the dimensions of a pressure Pascals. But clearly capillary pressure is a function of saturation. So what we can write here is J of SW. And J is the dimensionless, right, it's dimensionless, and it is the leverage J function. So this is your J function. So what we can do is I can find J from PC. So J of SW is equal to PC times root K over phi, and then divided by sigma cos theta. Okay, so instead of PC, I could plot instead J, couldn't I? It would just be a rescaling of this data. Okay, so instead of PC, this star doesn't have any units, I could instead write J, it would have the same shape, but it would be a dimensionless function. Now, what values would you expect? This J empirically typically has values between zero and one for most of the displacement. A typical entry pressure here normally is J in the range of about 0.2 to 0.3. If it's a more heterogeneous rock with a few super large pores, maybe you can enter the rock at a lower pressure so your J function will be lower. If it's more homogeneous rock, all the pores are about much the same size and uh, maybe the J function is slightly larger, but normally in this range. We normally finish most of the displacement at a J value of around one in a normal rock. We basically penetrated most of the major pore spaces. If we have a significant amount of microporosity, or a significant amount at least of smaller pores, the saturation here may be larger and we may indeed have capillary pressures that span another order of magnitude or two as we go into the really very small pore spaces of the rock. But typically J is of order one. Okay, well that's, that's interesting, but how do we make sense of that in terms of the practical application of saying, well, that's okay, but what I want is I want to draw or find capillary pressure in the field, given by an S against SW, okay, on a rock that we assume is of similar structure. So we're not comparing, say, sandstones and carbonates, we're, we can, we're taking a rock sample that we assume is reasonably representative of the field, but the fluid pairs, the porosity and permeability don't have to be exactly the same. So how can we scale the lab results to the field? The key assumption we make is we assume that the J function is the same, okay? The J function is the same, then what we can do is the J function can be written here with PC lab, okay? With lab values, but it's also equal to the J function we would find using field values. So we got an F for field here by F one over sigma cos theta in the field. Now, normally between the field and the lab, if we're looking at oil water, we assume that cos theta is about one. And so cos theta is the same in both cases. If we're dealing with a mercury system, actually there is a distinct contact angle and we, we look at sigma cos theta as a sort of package. Okay. So now we can write an equation, PC in the field, is PC measured in the lab. There's this scaling of permeabilities and porosities, so we'll do that. It's K lab over K field over phi in the field, phi in the lab. And I know it's quite difficult to see the subscript, so what I suggest you do is try and work it out yourself rather than sort of try and squint at it, right? It's relatively straightforward algebra. And then, we have sigma cos theta measured in the field and sigma cos theta measured in the lab, okay? And that's, this is a function of saturation, so this is a function of saturation. So a value here, say 
as a sake of argument, this is five kilopascals, this measurement point. To find the corresponding measurement point for the field, we would have five kilopascals times whatever this is. This is a dimensionless ratio and say it's a half as an example. So this would be 2.5 kilopascals. So it's essentially the same shape, just rescaled. Okay, so that's relatively simple introduction to the Leverett J function and how it is used. The other thing to bear in mind is that this capillary pressure in the field for primary drainage gives you an indication of how saturation is distributed in the reservoir above the free water level, which is where the oil and water pressures are the same, the capillary pressure is zero. As I go up, we see less and less water in the rock, we get more and more oil in because the capillary pressure is changing with height. So this could also be a measurement or a prediction of capillary pressure as a function of height because PC is delta rho, the density difference between the phases G times H, and this will be H above essentially the level where the oil and water pressures are the same. So it's also a rescaling of height um, for an oil field where oil has moved into the field in a primary drainage process. The other application would be if we have water and air and we have the water table, again, defined as where the oil and water, sorry, water and air pressures are the same. So again, the capillary pressure is the same. This will give you the distribution of water above that level. The water soaks into the soil. It lies above where the pressures are the same and there's a distribution of water. And again, it's just a rescaled capillary pressure. Okay, so there are the equations again, written slightly differently. I've assumed cos theta is the same on the board. But again, it's not a question of squinting at it and trying to see it. Relatively straightforward algebra. You can work it out yourself. So thank you very much.